But I'm so privileged to be joined by my friend, Joseph Z today, who was just at Noah's Ark himself. <laughs> and I'm playing for you guys right now the footage that he captured yeah. uh, with his cameras. You just came back from Noah's Ark and you have a lot to tell us, starting with some things that really hasn't been shared anywhere else, yeah. given how you just saw it with your physical eyes. I'm just going to open it right up to you. The big thing is, is right away, the scope and size of this structure. And when it, it is magnificent to see. Heather walked there with me, my wife Heather and I. We walked up to the structure. We were with Rick Renner and his team. And when we walked up, Heather burst into tears because it's so overwhelming when you see the actual size of this thing. Wow. That's number one. Secondly, when you realize the earth fell around it through an earthquake and it projected up from the earth, and it's a different object than what's in the ground and all the surrounding terrain. So it popped out of the earth in 1948 when wow. Israel was discovered as a nation or made a nation. And so that's just part of it. But the scans prove a lot of things. There's uh, a mud flow that proves it. There's an altar nearby that has inscriptions and carvings where sacrifices were done right after the ark must have landed. There is a nearby town called the town or the village of eight for eight participants or eight people. They named it after eight people that got off a ship. Uh, there's a landing place that's kind of sealed off, but people been there, where there's carvings on the wall of giraffes, of uh, elephants, things that shouldn't be in the mountains of Ararat, which is actually Armenia today, or it's people considered Armenia. But I got to tell you, the profound aspect was not just all the proof and the evidence. Like, I went to the site where one archaeologist core drilled into the structure and pulled out uh, animal hair and human-made fibers that were <laughs> way inside the rock. How does that happen, it's, right? It's all just a coincidence. It's all just it? a coincidence. Oh. But we walked all over it. We took aerial photos of it. We did everything, and it's Lord. been examined before. But I believe it's coming to light. There's people that uh, are there who've had the Science Channel out, the History Channel's looking at it. National Geographic wants to come back and do a redo. They're wow. reconsidering it. Wow. Because of so many things. The big thing gave. We went in the valley leading up to it. And there was what they call drogue stones. And they litter the valley like a trail that the ark must have followed as the waters were receding. The ark was coming to those mountain ranges. And as it was coming along, it landed, but it dropped these drogue stones, which are balancing rocks off the back of the ark to, to help it aim, to help wow. it stay balanced. And they dropped them. You can follow them like breadcrumbs all the way to the location that it is. And I got to tell you, I was thoroughly compelled and, and borderline convinced that this is indeed Noah's Ark. You can see the perfect shape. Yeah. It's all there. And uh, it's right by the Silk Road, Gabe. What is so difficult about getting to that spot? Everybody's wondering, like, why isn't this just the spectacle that everyone's flushing to? Like well, it's like anything. You know, there's, there's holy sites, then there's uh, geological areas that are within certain countries that don't allow certain things to happen without extensive red tape and permissions oh, and issues. Yeah. But also, it was a stone's throw, and I'm not kidding, from the Iran border. Wow. We're standing there looking at Iran, oh. them looking back at us. It was like, hey, how you doing? And they're looking at us like, don't come over here. You know? oh. And we were right there, and they could watch us standing on Noah's Ark from their towers. Oh, wow. Yeah, and so wow. we were right there, and it's not on Mount Ararat proper. That's kind of interesting. Mount Ararat itself is a stratovolcano, which means that it, it explodes again and again, and lava flows every generation or every several, however many years, keep growing the volcano. So whatever was there gets covered by hundreds of feet of lava every so often. Uh. So Noah's Ark, actually, the Bible says, was in the mountains of Ararat. Mountains of Ararat. So we could see Mount Ararat where we were standing, and it's exactly where the Bible says. It actually lines up with the Epic of Gil Gilgamesh wow. and several other ancient narratives. Wow. It all cross-references this location. What did that feel like, witnessing that, standing in that same place that is, is arguably one of the most famous stories of all time? Uh, it was, um, I think to use the word surreal, was to put it lightly. But the biggest thing that happened to me is because, you know, I've learned a long time ago, you can't just prove something. If people are committed to not believing something, they're not going to believe, they're it. Not believe yeah. it. No matter what evidence, it's like when it's never the enough. man who was talking to Lazarus, right, and Abraham, he said, if I sent somebody back from the dead, they'd believe. He said, no, they won't. No matter how much conclusive evidence you have, they won't. So what I found and my takeaway, my takeaway from being at the ark was the fact that I began to hear God speak about the future of this world, about the future of the planet, about the future of society, about the future of America. Mm. And I believe God sending me as a prophetic voice from America to stand in that location because he was speaking. 
he sent me to the seven churches of Revelation. We visited all those. And then we went to the headwaters of the Euphrates River, Gabe. Mm. We're standing at the headwaters of the Euphrates. Wow. And the Lord began to say, there's prophecy in motion right now, mm. biblical prophecy, and you got to have eyes to see and ears to hear it. And Noah's Ark, the takeaway was, there is coming a time of great instability, but it is a redemptive instability. Mm. And we're going to rise above this battle. And I believe there's another day coming and a new beginning coming. And this is not the end, not wow. yet. Uh, yeah, so almost like you're saying faith is a choice, Joseph, isn't it? At the end of the day, it comes down to the person's heart. That's right. Well, faith is an act of humility. It's a choice. Mm. It's all these things. Everything natural defies faith. But when faith defies everything in the natural, you receive from what is done in the spirit. And so when you're, when you're standing in a place like that, like Noah's Ark, yeah, you get questions. Yeah, could this be an anomaly? Yeah, there's, there's things people would want to lead to. But there's so much empirical evidence that it really is a ship. At the very least, it's a ship. At the very least, it's got an altar that matches Noah's narrative. Yeah. At, at the very least, there's a city or a town nearby called the Village of Eight. At the very least, there's anchor stones that traveled with the ark littered throughout this valley. Everything is there. It has beams and cross structures down in the rock that's fossilized. And I just got to say, God is speaking to the culture. He's speaking to your viewers right now. He's speaking to every one of you right now in the sound of my voice and Gabe's voice. And here's what I want to say to you. God doesn't want any one of you to perish. He's saying in the middle of what's coming next, he's going to help you to rise above the storm. He's going to help you float on the very turbulent waters that have held you back. God is making a way for you where there seems to be no way. Noah's Ark is wonderful, but the greatest ark there ever has been is Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And he'll carry you through the storm that's coming, both for eternity and this present day. We know that Galatians chapter 1, verse 4 says it's the will of God that you be delivered from this present evil age. And God is using Jesus Christ as his ark that you get in his life. You, you trade your life for his. You exchange and you go into him. I'm telling you, you're going to rise above all these things that are to come because there's going to be difficulty on this earth that's been unparalleled since our modern history. Yeah. Difficulty, wars, rumors of wars, challenges, but we're going to float above it all because yeah. Jesus is Lord. I have a promise in my heart that when I stood there, the Lord began to speak to me because it, it was a twofold thing. Uh, about a year and a half ago, two years ago, you and I were actually at a conference together. The Lord spoke something to me at that conference and said, come up here, come up higher, Joseph. Mm -hmm. I've called you. And then shortly on the heels of that, I was in Colorado Springs. And he said, go to the top of Pike's Peak. I'm at the top of Pike's Peak. And then I was reminded that that is called America's Mountain. As a matter of fact, when you hear the song, Purple Mountain Majesty, it's talking about Pike's Peak. And the Lord began to tell me, I've called you up higher. I've called you to stand on America's mountain. And now as you're standing on the site of Noah's Ark, I am telling you, America is one more round. It's going to float above the mess. It's going to see turbulence. It's going to see destruction. It's going to see judgment. It's going to see travesty. But it will come through in the end. And we will land at our divine destination. And there are going to be those that stand up and begin again because the new America is coming. And that is the word God gave me from Noah's Ark. Wow. What's so powerful, at the time right before the flood happened, yes. there was immense godlessness. There was. Immense unrighteousness, immense craziness, but it was convenient to stay in that for many. It was. It was convenient to, to live for yourself. And right now, it is convenient to live for yourself and not find a family of God to be a part of, not find True. Uh, a, 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 the blood of Christ to submit to. It's, it's convenient to just keep doing what you want. But Joseph... If they will repent, yeah. if every viewer right now, if you'll That's just it. finally give in Come on. to the plan God has for you and finally just say yes. Say yes. To what he has written. Joseph, it's worth it. It is. Because if you, when you get in the ship, you may be unpopular, <laughs> you may be criticized, and you may be made fun of, but you're safe in the arms of Father God. You know, and we're not offering people the plague here. No. People, you know, it's like people say, hey, get born again. It's not like we're offering you something that's terrible. We're offering you John <laughs> chapter 10, life yes. and life more abundantly. Yes. If you want to have an enhanced life experience, give your life to Jesus. Get on the ark and let's go through this thing together. Come on. And you may want to call us delusional or off our rocker. <laughs> delusional. Or, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what it is, though? I'm delusionally more joyful than, than I've ever been under Christ. So, <laughs> so whatever label you want to put me that I've lost my head, sure, I have because I found my calling in Christ. Like, yeah. like, and we just got to embrace that, Joseph. Amen. And as a viewer, guys, I just want to encourage you, just embrace it and just say yes to God and just give in. <laughs> Amen. Just give in. Fall into Jesus. I just want to encourage everyone watching. I've 
tagged his channel in the title of this video. You guys, do yourself a favor, go check his videos out. 